All right, now we're still on our cardiac mode here and we are looking at another life-threatening cardiac event, but this one is called abdominal aortic aneurysm or aortic dissection. I can group these two together because, wow, they're both dealing with the aorta. Now you gotta go back to my original video the original video that talks about cardiac pathophys or basics told you that the aorta was the biggest artery in the entire body and it's responsible for taking blood that was pumped from the the left ventricle and taking that blood and taking it all over the body and so if there's something going on in that aorta you're affecting blood all over the body so I'm going to come up to the camera and I'm going to show you this picture and hopefully you can tell with my finger over tapping here on the left hand side, that's a normal aorta. This picture, whoa, is an aortic, abdominal aortic aneurysm. That is scary. Let me tell you what I mean. First of all, you got to kind of know the anatomy. The aorta is coming off of the heart and it is, it is, um, it is branching, if you will, along your back side of your heart. I don't know if you can tell by this picture. I certainly hope that you can. What I mean, I'm going to come a little bit closer to you and show you how this aorta is coming off the heart but it's going behind the heart so i don't know if you can see that but it's going behind the heart and it's coming and lining along your back and then it is splitting around your it's it's coming down and it's splitting around the umbilicus or the navel so if you think of your belly button here the aorta comes all the way down and it splits around that area around your belly button well, this aneurysm would be at the top of the split going into your limbs. It would be at the top of the split and technically the aneurysm would probably be about here on your belly. So belly button, you'll see my finger on my belly button and then take your fist and put it right here. The aneurysm could be the size of your fist and that's important for you to think about, even though all of our hands are different size. If it's the size of my fist or bigger, it is literally going to kill me, okay? Because aneurysms are, you know, they can come in different sizes. And let's say that we found an aneurysm by accident and it's only three centimeters. Oh, okay, well, let's watch it every six months with this ultrasound. But if you come in and we see right by your belly button that you got something beating or pulsating and really it's going to be pulse i can see it on the outside of the belly pulsating then that is going to be measured by an ultrasound and if i see something bigger than five centimeters oh it's an emergency the thing about it though before at this I call it a hand grenade in the belly or a little bomb in your belly. Before that actually would explode like a hand grenade, you wouldn't know you had it. No, you wouldn't have any symptoms too much. It just sits there like, you know, silent but deadly and it can just explode. Now, I want to show you, uh, let's see if I have it here, a couple of pictures of what I'm pretty much talking about after it's been repaired. So if you pay attention to these pictures, you can see all of these are various states of repair. And I'm not focused on the repair because I don't do repairs, I'm a nurse. I'm focused on whether or not you can see the branching out and the bulging, the weakness in the wall of the vessel. And I need you to keep in mind that the doggone thing was supposed to look like that it was supposed to be completely straight up and down normal and you've got this ballooning happening and that's crazy all right now why did that happen well let's give you a profile sometimes
times we cannot give you a typical patient, but for this one, we really can. We can give you a profile of what's going on with this patient. It is the typical patient is older than 60, definitely a smoker, typically obese, and almost always, but you can't be an absolutist, so you can't always say always, but almost always a male. So a male older than 60 who smokes and is obese coming in with pain is, you know, typical of maybe a heart attack, maybe just chronic back pain, maybe whatever. So when you think about taking a test and being a nurse afterwards and taking care of real people, okay, we need to know where is this pain? What is this pain doing? Oh, this pain, this pain is classic. If that patient's aneurysm, abdominal aortic aneurysm is bursting or has already ruptured, if you will, if it's burst, they're going to be in shock very quickly. But before they go into shock, before they lose all their mental status and become altered in some way and can't really tell you what's going on, they will describe a tearing, ripping pain in their back. It will get worse by the minute and it will be, it will be lower back. It won't be up high, it'll be in their lower back. So what am I saying? Well, if you get a patient who's older, who's a male and smokes, and they're complaining of worsening back pain, oh my God, act quickly, right? And in your notes, I may even say older than 40, because you kind of got to think about the aortic dissection, which could also be tearing, even a tiny tear is a dissection. The difference between this is this may not have popped yet, and this absolutely is tearing. So aortic dissection, tearing, aor abdominal aortic aneurysm, bulging, when it tears or bursts, it's gonna be all hell breaks loose. It's gonna be horrible. But again, it might be subtle complaining because it's a man, and you know men don't go on and on and on. In fact, if you have this gentleman complaining of worsening back pain, and they're tachycardic. Oh, you can bet your last dollar it's an aneurysm. Sweating may be part of the territory. Their blood pressure initially before it actually popped would have been high because this gentleman here most likely has either diagnosed or undiagnosed hypertension history. So he may or may not know that because a lot of guys don't go to the hospital. And I said to the class the other day that the 45 to 64 year old male is usually uninsured. They just don't have health insurance. It may even be that they qualify, but they didn't know it. And that's where, you know, education comes in. But so we have this man, he's got a hypertension history or none. He doesn't know he has hypertension. He comes in, he's, he's complaining that his back hurts and it's getting worse by the minute. He's a smoker, he's older, he's uh, pudgy, obese, fluffy, whatever you wanna call it and you need to act fast because this is 80% of people will die from this. 80% of people will never survive an abdominal aortic aneurysm unless we act fast. Now, let's remember to split these people up in two parts. One person is the abdominal aortic aneurysm that has not ruptured yet. The other patient is the one that has absolutely ruptured and they're gonna die soon. If we think about the patient who's not ruptured yet, I need you to remember that 20% of nurses actually picked up on this in their physical exam. Now you may or may not remember how we do a physical exam of the abdomen, but an abdominal exam is gonna include inspection. So I'm gonna look at your belly. And if I look at this patient's belly, I'm going to see again, what? a pulsating mass around the belly button. I'm, I'm gonna see it. 
what else am I going to do as I do this, this abdominal exam? Well, I looked first, and remember the body parts I'm gonna to point to on me are in order of the way you do this abdominal exam. So I looked or I visualized first, that's called inspection, and then I listened to the belly. Now remember how this goes when you listen to the belly? It's called auscultation, and you had to listen for five minutes in each quadrant, and you always, always were listening in these quadrants, and you were listening for bowel sounds. Remember the quick way I taught you how to do a very quick abdominal assessment because bowel sounds are usually always heard in this area. I told you to always go from the listening to the heart sound and the lung sounds at the same time and go diagonally across to the right lower quadrant and start there for bowel sounds because they were always there on most people. Remember I taught you that? Well, in this situation, bowel sounds are okay. You can listen, but I'm pointing to an abdominal aortic aneurysm. And you have this big, huge balloon in this patient's belly. And in this balloon section of this patient's belly, when you put your stethoscope around the area where there is pulsating, you actually are gonna hear a brewy. But you have gotta remember what we taught you. We taught you to listen for a brewy, B for brewy, B-R-U-I-T, we told you to listen to a brewy with the bell of the stethoscope. B for bell, B for brewy. That's how you listen for this brewy, with the bell of your stethoscope. Because there's a lot of blood in the area and it's called a brewy, okay? So you inspected the belly, you saw a pulsating mass. You listened with your stethoscope, the bell of your stethoscope, and you heard a brewy. You continued down the patient's body and you felt for pulses in the extremities, pedal pulses, tibial pulses, and they were weak. They were there, but they were weak. Now, if the, if the aortic aneurysm ruptures, they're gonna be absent. But right now, they're just weak. They're not the strongest pulses, okay? Because you have all the blood here, all right? So those are some things that you have to remember. Now, what do you do first? Well, you make sure this patient doesn't get out of the bed because anything can cause this to rupture. And you let that physician know as soon as humanly possible or that nurse practitioner know that this patient has, you believe, an abdominal aortic aneurysm based on a brewy in the abdomen and a pulsating mass and weak or diminished pedal pulses. And what they're gonna do is get an ultrasound. You know that's in your procedures. An ultrasound is easy. It's non-invasive. It uses warm gel to just, you know, look at this aneurysm and measure it and what did I say I said five and a half six centimeters is the size of my fist and if it's that size or more they're gonna have to be scheduled for a surgical repair that's common sense right so we say again five and a half to six centimeters or more needs to be operated on right away if it's less than four centimeters, we're gonna watch it with an ultrasound every six months or so. This patient, by the way, remember the cause? Smoking, hypertension, most are obese. They're going to stop smoking today. They're going to have at least two, most likely three, blood pressure medications. One will probably be a diuretic or something, right? That's how we do it and they're going to be told that this is a time bomb and that if they continue to smoke and they don't manage their blood pressure and if they don't get their weight under control, they are going to cause this aneurysm to grow and one day explode and that 80% don't come back from that. I don't know about you, but that's all you had to tell me to put my cigarettes down. I ain't doing no more blunts. I ain't doing no more cigarettes. I ain't gonna smoke that funny tobacco. I ain't trying to do no reef for nothing. I ain't smoking nothing if you told me that, okay? So you've got to teach. You've got to get this person motivated, highly motivated, to stop the madness. Now, when I come back, we're going to talk about medication.